Well, hello, everybody. How is everybody doing tonight? I am Chris Swataco with the singlesnetwork.org ministries, Chris Swataco Ministries, the Labor Day Singles Retreat and Intentional Relationship Solutions. How is everyone doing? And happy Father's Day. Um, you know, I miss my dad. Uh, my dad has been gone. Well, my stepdad, um, my stepdad has been gone for quite some time. And, um, and I'll be honest with you, it, it, even though it's been a really long time since he's passed away, um, because he changed the lives of me, my siblings, my mother, um, I would say rarely a day goes by that I don't think about him, that I don't think about what he meant in our life. And, also, something really big is he brought Christ into our home, uh, besides donuts and popcorn. He really, really liked popcorn, salty snacks, and sweet snacks. And uh, so that was just my dad. Um, part of the time I called him Henry, part of the time I called him dad, because he became my dad, my stepfather, when I was 15 years old. And so I had been raised by a birth father that wasn't really around very much and wasn't really the best dad. And then Henry came along and married my mom and really became the dad that I would say anybody would want. Um, so welcome again tonight. My name is Chris Fataco. Happy Father's Day for those of you who are watching, whether you're watching live or on a rerun um, or someone else's page and not on the original Labor Day Singles Retreat page, we do welcome you. Thank you for watching and please share this video with someone who might need to hear the message. Well, just like with Mother's Day, um, I, I believe that parenting comes in many forms. Um, I don't always, uh, you know, really value a lot of times we only focus on traditional mothers, traditional fathers, the parenting, not that I don't value, uh, the, the role that my father had in my life or my mother had in my life, but I believe that you can be a father in lots of other different ways, just like you can be a mom in lots of ways. Um, in my situation, it was my stepfather who was my dad. Um, maybe an uncle or a grandfather was that person who really parented you. Um, or could it be someone like a friend, a teacher, a pastor? Maybe it was a neighbor that took some extra time with you when you were growing up or a leader. Uh, maybe you had, you know, were in the club, Cub Scouts, I was in the Girl Scouts. Or, you know, maybe you had a job and it was your boss or... Um, it, when you were young, or maybe when you are growing up, it was your boss. The point is, it's somebody who's made a difference in your life. Maybe they discipled you. Maybe they came alongside you and helped you and, and uh, were there for you. Here's the thing. A father figure can be anyone that you value, respect, and trust. Someone who gave you advice, encouraged, and supported you. So put in the chat below... Who has been a father figure in your life? Hi, Sherry, Jimmy, Mary Lois, Carrie. Who's been a father figure in your life? And, and what made them special? What made them special to you? Um, you know, you think about that and you think, you know, some of you had great dads. You've had amazing fathers in your life. And you have you can't even stop talking about them. And some of them, of course, are still in your life. They're, you know, they're still alive and they're still very important in your life. And then sometimes our dads weren't so great. I had the best of both worlds. And then sometimes, you know, that relationship is just, it's a struggle. Our parents change roles. I, I know my pastor today was talking about his father and how that his father was just literally the example of any parent, a, a Christian parent would be. But then as he got older, he got dementia and his personality changed and he wasn't the same person and how hard that was for him to see and accept. Um, and let me ask you another question. What does it take to be a good father, uh, to be a good father figure? What do you think that looks like? Well, I was trying to think of some of the father figures in my life. Um, and I'm just going to mention a few of them. And as you, as I'm going through some of these, maybe you've got some one in mind as well that you're like, I never thought about him that way. I never thought that, yeah, they did do that in my life. And it might just bring to mind some people that were really special that maybe even need a little shout out. Maybe you need to like email or call them and say, thank you for stepping in or thank you for coming alongside me as a child, as an adult and being 
kind of like the dad in, in, in an indirect way, right? And one of the first people that I thought of was Joseph Northcutt. Now, Joseph Northcutt is with Church Initiative, and they're the ones who create divorce care and grief share. And Joseph, for the last 15 years, has been a mentor to me. Um, he is uh, not old enough to be my dad, but at the same time, has definitely mentored me like a dad would. That would be definitely a Christ-like quality. Uh, he's always supported the work that I'm doing. He's provided wisdom in ministry. I've been able to go to him and say, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And well, isn't that what dads do? Isn't that a great characteristic of a father, a, a godly father also that you can go to him and ask him questions to get his wisdom? And then I thought of my Sunday school teacher today. He's actually younger than me. And 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 yet, you know, he kind of fathers us because he's our teacher. He's also a, a father himself, and he also is a professor. And I think about how he talks to me or emails me. He's always wanting to teach us the the best that we could learn in as far as the word of God. He's always giving us encouragement. Um, he's when he, you know, like, like a like a father wants to come alongside and really help you to understand what you're learning. And encourage you that even when you get it wrong, he still encourages you. That's a really good father figure. Well, then there's Pastor Jay George. Jay George is uh, what is a uh, used to be a singles pastor, and he's definitely my friend. We're the same age, and and uh, Jay is really neat. Now he comes to our Labor Day singles retreat every year, brings a group of singles from um, uh, Louisiana. But one of the things I like about Jay is he always reaches out to me to pray for me. Isn't that a good father figure? Isn't that a good characteristic? I mean, he has four kids and I think he just had his third or fourth grandchild, but he always makes himself available. No matter when I call, it's I always feel like I'm the only one in his calendar. That's how he is. And wouldn't that be cool if every dad was that way? That no matter when you call them, they're not busy, that they've got time for you, as if like you are the only reason they answer the phone. But Pastor Jay has that way with people. He always makes you feel special. And then I think of pastors like Pastor Rich Hurst and Terry Hershey, Ann Smith, and she was the founder of the Labor Day Singles Retreat and Christian Single Magazine, which unfortunately is not in print anymore. And I think of them and so many more that were the founders of singles ministry and how they encouraged me when I was in my 20s. Rich Hirsch specifically taught me to give the ministry away. He says, Chris, you have to teach the next generation. Of course, I was really young at the time, so I was like, well, who's behind me? But what he meant is as we grow in our walk with God, we should always teach the next person. Always be giving the ministry away. Everything you know, tell the next person What's your legacy going to be? Isn't that what a, da a dad does? A dad comes alongside and does the same thing and wants to teach you how to do something so you could teach your kids or teach a people that you're mentoring or discipling. And then, of course, there's Pastor Tom Harris and Pastor Freddie Johnson, Pastor Dan Houck. These are members of my board. These are people I've written books with. These are people uh, that I'm friends with, they encourage me. And I love this because they've never given up on me. They've supported me, held me accountable at times when I've needed it. Mm -hmm. That's discipline, right? Protected me in the ministry, looking out for me, making sure that the ministry is protected. Um, they're my biggest fans. And they're, they're men that I can trust in. Isn't that, again, what a father figure should be? Someone that is going to hold you accountable. Someone that's going to correct you if you need correcting. Someone that cares for you and is going to protect you. You know, when you're a teenager, you don't think your parents are trying to protect you. You think they're just trying to get in your business. But no, they really are trying to protect you. Even today, my mom says, hey, whenever you get to wherever you're going, call me. Because she says she will always be my mother. Or how about this? This is somebody special in my life. It was my grandfather. My Polish grandfather. Uh, we called him Jodic, which means Polish for grandfather. His name was Kazmir. And he just always thought I was beautiful. A father figure sees beyond our mess ups, our failures. They see you as Christ sees you, beautiful and loved. It seemed like no matter what I did, Jodic, my grandfather, loved me 
and made me feel special, made me feel pretty. But isn't that what a father figure should do? And then, of course, there was my Uncle Howard. He filled in where my birth father was not. Growing up, uh, there were times that you needed a dad, and my birth father was never around. He was gone for a year to two years at a time in the military. And Howard would step in and be that dad. He would always show support to me and my siblings, and he spent time with us, and he would explain things to us, and he was patient with us. And he'd say, hey, Chris, if you need help, be sure to ask. And I thought, wow, a good father figure is going to teach those principles. A good father figure is going to say, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't act like you've got it all figured out because you don't. Our Heavenly Father says the same, doesn't he? Ask me for help, he says. And then I remember a former professor of mine named Vince Foote. Vince believed in me when I didn't believe in myself in college. A great father figure reminds you that you can do anything, especially in Christ. That was the thing I loved about Vince. He saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. He saw potential. And we need our dads. And as a dad, if you're watching this, we need to see in our children, or we need to be seen that, that we can do anything. And that we are, you know, we need them to be our biggest hero and to believe in us, even when we don't believe in ourselves. So many people have identity issues. They really don't know who they are in Christ. They're trying to identify in the world, compete in the world, move up in the world, and have all the things of the world, and yet the greatest thing they could ever have is Christ. And then the last one was my grandfather, Van. This was my mom's dad, Evander. He gave me pony rides on his knees and would listen to me. I was one of 96 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I don't even think he knew my name. Well, he probably did. But what I remembered about him the most is that he liked to have fun. He put me on his knee and, and go up and down. Up and down. He was in a wheelchair and he would just, and all the grandkids got a ride. And he reminded me that, you know what, dads, we need to have fun. You need to do fun things with your kids. Even if you're an adult, you still need to do fun things. So, you know, the Bible is full of fathers and father figures displaying amazing characteristics of Christ characteristics that we can strive to be like or be thankful if we're already there. I think of Paul, who was a father to many in starting churches, building leaders and discipling others and, and uh, training up the next generation, including Timothy, who he felt like he was like a son to him that he never had. 1 Corinthians 4.17 says, For this reason I have sent you to Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I have teach you everywhere in every church. Isn't this cool that Timothy was like a son? But Timothy knew Paul so well that he knew his teachings as well. And again, remember that generational thing of teaching the next generation, teaching those around you what you know. What are you doing to train the next generation? As a parent, a friend, a leader, a grandparent, a neighbor? Who are you sharing your faith with? Who are you teaching what you know? Thank you for those of you that are watching this that are already doing that. You're already discipling. You're already passing on the knowledge that you have to the next generation. You're not hoarding all that God has given you and you're giving it to others. Thank you. Another father in the Bible, I mean, Paul was a pseudo father right not a biological father but a biological father was job a biological father he has seven sons and seven daughters job 1 18 through 22 says this while he was still speaking yet another messenger came and said your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the old at your older brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck all four corners of the house it collapsed on them and they are dead and I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. And then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. 
despite losing them all, his children, the deepest of grief, he didn't blame God. He just praised him. I don't know about you. Could you have done that? Could you have praised God if you lost everything? Wife, husband, if you're a woman, you know, children, your home, your stuff, your your job. I mean, would you, would you be praising God? But you know what? This is the type of characteristic that makes a great father and a great father figure. That no matter when the storms come and no matter what they look like, they don't budge. Their faith is so strong. Thank you for those of you who, despite the storms, you've learned to weather them, to be an example to others. The other day, my mom and I were talking and we were talking about money and and uh, we were wanting to bless someone and, and God just reminded us again, it's not our money. It's his money. And that we're just stewards of it. We're stewards of all of our stuff and and how we shouldn't think about what we're going to keep. But, you know, what do we want to give? Knowing that God owns it all. Then there's Joseph. Joseph was a biological father and a stepfather, specifically to Jesus. Matthew 1, 1 through 7 says, or maybe this is Matt, Matthew 1, 17. Let me go back. It might be Matthew 1, 17. Let me read it and then we'll, we'll figure it out later. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Don't you love Joseph? Joseph. He was Jesus' stepdad, just like Henry was my stepdad. I think about how Joseph loved Jesus as if he was his own child, and probably nobody else knew except him and Mary uh, that he was uh, nobody other than his child. And so there was no favorites or, you know, no, no separation. And that's the way Henry was with me and my siblings. He loved us all like as if we were his biological children. What's neat about Joseph is that he was obedient to God to raise him as such. He accepted the situation from God. A characteristic of a great father, father figure is someone who is willing to take on another man's family, another person's child, another, another person's responsibility, not making excuses or complaining, just doing it. Thank you to all you out there, you dads who've taken on other people's children. Maybe you had become a stepfather and that was never your thought of your plan, but God has put that in your, your lap right now and you're being a stepdad. What does that look like? You have great, great potential to have a great effect on that child, even if the child is an adult. But thank you that you're willing to marry and become a blended family. And then there's Noah. Noah I'm going to read two set of scriptures, Genesis 6, 9 through 10 and Genesis 6, 18. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then in Genesis 6, 18, but I will establish my covenant with you. You will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. Wow. Noah was righteous and blameless and did what God asked him to do. What great qualities of a father or a father figure. As a result of his walk with God, his kids and their spouses benefited and they also, their lives were saved. What an example to Noah's kids of his commitment to God, of his obedience to God. When other people were laughing and going, there's that dude down there building an ark. Oh my gosh, he must be a little loony. And yet, he wasn't. He was listening to God. He had a relationship with God and his children. 
got to see that. And as a result, they had a relationship. I don't know to what degree. I don't know much about them. And maybe some of you are watching do. But I, I love how, because of his faith, they benefited from it. What about you? How have you benefited from your father or your father figure who loved God? I know with me, because Henry loved the Lord and he brought Christ into our home and we went to church. Now for me, I was already pretty much grown and I had my own opinion and thoughts and I ended up going to a different church, but those seeds were planted. They were continuing to witness to me and to pray for me. And it made all the difference in my life today. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the faith and the commitment to God that my father had. And then the last one, by the way, there are a ton of these in the Bible, but I love it how we've got Father Abraham. Remember the song? Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I love that. That's so cool, right? Abraham was given a prophecy by God that he was going to be a father to many nations. But he was pretty old. And he's like, yeah, I don't think this is going to happen. You know, you're kind of beginning to think, how is it going to happen? And, and well, at least with Sarah, his wife. But God is faithful in his promises. So we know the story, Sarah gives birth to Isaac, all is good, to God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son. Genesis 22, 1 through 2 and 6 through 8. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. Here I am, he replied. Then God says, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. I just can't even imagine what Abraham was thinking, or Sarah. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the wood, the night, the fire, and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. This reminds me of the other lamb that was sacrificed for you and me. Jesus, the lamb of God. Another incredible thing that God has done for us is he sacrificed his own son for our sins so that we would be forgiven and so that we would have an opportunity to go to heaven and that we'd be able to spend eternity with Jesus, to spend eternity in heaven. What are you, where are you at in your walk with God? Are you, are you questioning whether you know God? Or maybe you grew up in church, but you really never, don't even remember much about God. Or maybe you grew up in church, but you've kind of fallen away doing your own thing. And, and maybe life isn't what you thought it was going to be. Kind of like with Abraham, right? I mean, think about it. God promised him all these children. He didn't have any. He got to be old and decrepit, right? He finally gets this son that he loves. And then God says, go sacrifice him. It was a test. God was testing Abraham to see if his commitment to him. I know a lot of you watching this, you've been through many tests. You feel like God has tested you over lots of things. And it's hard. It's really hard. Today I was singing a song, have that own way, Lord, have that own way. And this gentleman walked up to me and he said, are you really, do you believe those words of that song? I am the potter, you're the clay. Mold me and make me. I went, yeah. And he goes, are you sure? I went, yeah. He goes, are you sure you want to be, it's going to hurt? I'm like, yeah, I've been pruned many times in my life. Yeah, it does hurt. But I know every time I go through something hard, God is using it to make me stronger. God is using it as witness to others. I don't like it. Do you like it? I don't like being pruned. I don't like being disciplined. It hurts. But I know when we suffer, we're suffering in alignment to his suffering. And it's okay. Some of you are in the same place as Abraham. You expected your life to turn out a certain way and it hasn't. And maybe you're not happy with God right now. Your heavenly father. Don't give up on him. He loves you so much. More than you could ever fathom. More than you could ever love anyone in your life. He's working in your life right now. He wants you just to turn to him and surrender and say, I, I, I can't figure this out. I can't do it in my power. I cannot be good enough to get to heaven. I cannot be good enough to have a relationship. Guess what? You need him to be good enough. 
in our flesh, in our ability, we can't do anything apart from him. We need him. Don't turn your back on God. He has not turned his back on you. He has not given up on you. You have to be intentional about your relationship with God so that you can be intentional about all your other relationships, your family, your friends, and romance. Maybe some of you are watching this, you got married and expecting to stay married and raise your kids, but now your marriage is gone. Your marriage ended, whether you're divorced or whether you're a widow. And here's the thing, if you're in divorce, I know you didn't plan this, I know you don't get your kids, but every other weekend, fight for your kids. My birth father never fought. He abandoned us and he never came back. Don't miss an opportunity to see your children. Fight for equal custody. Be in their lives. They need a father. Do you know that focus on the family? Dr. Dobson said 20 years ago, the problem of our world isn't sin. It's that there's no daddies. Well, I'd say it's sin too. But what his point was he's making is that we focus so much on people's sin, but the reality is there's not enough daddies in the home. There's not enough daddies raising kids. The, kid, the, the, the Every other weekend and every third Tuesday is not enough, guys. It's not enough. Fight for your kids. Email them, text them, call them, write them. Whatever it takes to be the dad that Christ wants you to be, don't you give up. No matter what your former wife says or does, don't give up. And then some of you have prodigals. Don't give up praying. I was a prodigal. Don't give up praying. If you raise them to love Jesus, it's still there. And it will come back to them at some point in time when they're ready. Pray whatever it takes short of them dying to get them to turn their life back to Christ. But I join you in prayer for them as well. And then some of you are still waiting to find your Sarah and to have your Isaac. And it's hard, I know. We always talk about women who don't get husbands and women who struggle with you know, wanting children, but there's a lot of men out there that feel the same way. And I know, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you haven't gotten married or remarried and you don't have the children that you wanted, but please don't stop praying. Don't stop asking God and expecting from God if he's giving you that promise. In the meantime, though, think of adoption. Think of foster care. Think of being a Sunday school teacher or watch kids in the nursery or be a coach Help single parents be the father figure in a kid's life today or even an adult kid because it could make an eternal difference. Even though it wasn't what you would want, it could still fill your heart and it could make a difference in their lives. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for another time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you give it to us that it's alive and that it applies to us every day. Thank you for being the ultimate father for us. You are our heavenly father. And you have the characteristics and models that we want to be um, as your daughters, as your sons, as fathers, as mothers, as father and mother figures, Lord. That we have been given responsibility to so many under us. Whether we work with them or live beside them or nieces or nephews or grandchildren, Lord. You have given us um, this calling, this, this command to make disciples. And that means even in our own homes. Lord, I pray for people today that it's a tough day. Their, their, past, their dad has died or maybe they died and they didn't have a great relationship and they can't fix it, but they can fix their relationships in their life, Lord. Or maybe they're just struggling with their dad right now that's in their life for whatever reason. It's just been difficult. Lord, I pray for all those situations that they would lay him at the foot of the cross and let you be in control. We can only control our actions, Lord, but we can't control the actions of others. And then, Lord, let's celebrate the fathers in our lives that have been those great dads, whether we always agreed or not. And, Lord, I celebrate also the men that are watching that are dads or father figures. Don't ever take for granted the influence that we have on others. And, Lord, if someone's watching this that doesn't know you, I pray they would accept you as they're into their heart. I pray they would say, hey, I'm a sinner, and I sin, and I need forgiveness for my sins, and I need a Savior, and only Jesus can I get that? Only through Jesus to get to God can I be saved. Oh, Lord, I pray right now that they would accept that and that free gift of salvation and that their life will be changed forevermore. In Christ's name, amen.
quick commercials. Don't want you to forget, uh, tomorrow night we are doing, um, for me personally, we're doing a couple cruises are coming up and we're going to have the FAQ for cruising. So if you're like, I'm still debating whether I want to do Alaska or I want to do the Dominican Republic, I've got questions. The lady who owns all Christian cruises is going to be on live uh, with me and RK Praise, which is the worship and teaching team uh, that answer all your questions. Then on Tuesday night, some of my Labor Day people will put in the chat. Um, I put it at the top of the chat already, but you can put it at the bottom of the chat, is that we're having an FAQ for the Labor Day singles retreat. So again, if you have questions on accommodations, what the rooms look like, you know, what's the best place to stay? What about cars? You know, how do I get there? Um, what about how do I serve? I want to volunteer. What about the food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be answering all those questions. So definitely want to tune in. It'll be right here in the original location of this video, the Labor Day singles Facebook page. Um, also, we have our wish list posted, and um, we help offset our expenses for our retreat by people ordering things off Amazon. That is also on our website. T-shirt orders, you can definitely get your T-shirt order in. Um, also, my contact information of other things that I'm doing, please check it out. I'm going to be going to Europe again this September, and I'm doing the fun thing of raising support. So if you feel uh, called to do that, Lord, we would, Lord, I'm, I'm, like I'm praying in the middle of talking, uh, but if you feel called that you would like to sow into the ministry in Europe that I do, please, I, I would ask and receive that you would um, give to Chris Wataka Ministries. Anyway, till the next time, God bless. Happy Father's Day to everyone. And I will see you next week when we have a special guest of Ernest Jefferson who's going to be on live at five with me. You don't want to miss it. Ernest is awesome. He is one of our leaders for our team and uh, he would definitely be an encouragement. And we're going to be answering questions called questions that singles ask. And uh, it'll be a great time. So to next time, God bless. Thanks everybody. See you later.